by many of you a song that you will not know that he wrote because we never made a video out of it. Again, he recorded it. And there's a Cape Verdean song that was written for my uncle during World War II. He said, Papa, write me a song for mom for Mother's Day so because we're away in the war. Write me a song that we can give her for Mother's Day. And that song is called Amorth Money. Candida recorded it. Uh, Flash and Vicky Vieira recorded it. Tiny Tobias, I believe, has recorded it. That's my, that was my grandfather's song. I'm sorry for taking such a long introduction, but I'm saying that to say how important our oral history is. I grew up around storytelling in my family, and what you were about to witness, if you've never before, is a very extraordinary special treat by a beloved friend from Providence, as I said, who has made a career of telling stories about life experiences. He has stories about Cape Verde. He tells stories to help us learn lessons. He tells stories about how we think about who we are in the world, what we think about our future. He tells stories about probably anything. You probably could just give him a word. I don't know. I'm making that. You probably could give him a word. And he would come up with a story for so rather than take any more of the long time I've already taken to make this introduction, please have me welcome Len Cabral. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. I'm glad to be here this morning. And I can't do that for one That's one. And um, I was... Uh, thinking about a few things leading up to this day, and uh, I work a lot in school. I work around the country and outside the country, and uh, I tell the stories, uh, thank you very much. I tell stories uh, from uh, Cape Verde, Rockville, uh, travels, uh, but I tell stories from many different cultures. I write stories, and I tell folk tales from around the world, because uh, stories are very important. And I like to start off, when I travel around, especially around America, you know, on the East Coast, people know about Cape Verde, about uh, Creoles and Cape Verde. But in uh, other parts of the country, uh, people don't know so much about the diversity that we have here on the East Coast. And, uh, and I tell people that, especially when I'm working with young uh, men and women, about our ancestors, and think for a moment how brave, how brave and how desperate those whalers were, those men who left, uh, you know, Jackie's grandfather, who was a stowaway at 12 years old, Th those men who left Cape Verde to seek their fortune, to do better, to feed their family, to seek work, because they there wasn't work on the islands to better themselves. They had to leave their homeland to make a living. And the only way to do that for many was to get a job on a passing ship. And those ships were whaling ships. So I think how brave our ancestors were, and how desperate they were, to go out onto the oceans of the world on a wooden ship and pick a fight with the largest mammal on the planet, a whale. How brave these men were. And so when we walk as Cape Verdeans, we, we, we must walk, we must be proud of our ancestors. We must tell our, our children about the, the, how, the, the strength of, of the Cape Verdean people, the determination and how they move forward to, to better themselves. And so as I travel around the country and the world telling stories, I always tell at least one or two stories about Cape Verde. And I, and I think back at these, these men who took, took to the oceans of the world to pick a fight with a whale, and they came to the, the shores of New Bedford, and they went from fighting the largest mammal on the planet to picking the smallest berries on the planet, cranberries. And, um, but working all the time. And so uh, I'd like to start off with uh, this song that I grew up hearing. When I was a, a young boy, it's, um, I'm sure many of you know the song too. So sabi, so sabi, 
I'm so glad, I'm so glad. It's just you and me here. Not your mother, not your father, just you and me. Woo! Yeah. Good time. So I'm going to start off with a story about no load. Now, there's no load who is the, the first, every culture has somebody that says, ah, don't be like that. No load was like that. Every culture has somebody that they, 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 they don't want people to be like. They set the example. Uh, in West Africa and the Caribbean, it's Anansi. You know, sometimes Anansi is a hero, sometimes he's not so nice. But no lobe, they say, oh, don't be like no lobe. Oh, don't sleep all day. No lobe, sleep all day. This is what happens to no lobe. And another character in the story is Shabin. Shabin um, was the monkey, uh, the macaque. And then there's no lobe's nephew, Tabin. Now, Tabin was busy, busy, busy all the time. He'd be working in the yard, repairing the fence, digging in the garden, painting, helping his neighbors. Oh, he was always busy, busy, busy. That was Tabino. And Tabino, one day, Tabino was out and he was planting some manioc. And he said, oh, I'm going to plant some manioc today and I hope my lazy uncle, No Lobe, does not come by. So you see No Lobe, he likes to eat, but he does not like to work. So I hope he does not come by. But Tabino went out into the garden and he decided to plant manioc. Now, whenever Tabino worked, he always had a song in his heart. And he sang his favorite song, which was, So sabi, so sabi, then para rica, so sabi. He planted New York here, he planted New York. Oh, I'm going to plant some New York right here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He planted New York here and over here. Oh, yes. He planted New York. Oh, oh I love to plant New York, and I hope my lazy uncle no longer does not come by. Oh, yeah. That a boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he planted New York over here. Oh, yeah. I like planting New York, and I hope my lazy uncle does not come by. Just then he heard the voice of the doctor coming over the mountain. Ay, ay. It's no longer. And no longer was singing his favorite song, which was I tunga, I tunga, I tunga, I tunga, I tunga, I tunga, I tunga. 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 Don't you eat my manioc? No, I don't. I will. I won't eat. Don't worry. And Tabino, he started to plant manioc here. No lobe, he started planting manioc over here. But as soon as Tabino turned around, no lobe tiptoed across the field. And he ate some of the manioc. <laughs> and Tabino's over here working his look. He said, hey, no 